Now you can name and save your program using the methods that we covered previously. So let's say I was editing my rock band program, maybe changing the sine wave here or some particular edit, and a note becomes hung up like this. I now would be forced on most synthesizers to exit and save whatever changes I've made and get out of my editing. On our instrument, a simple press of the two buttons under the more and pitch will send the all notes off command and silence a stuck note. We'll also reset controllers. Let's say all of a sudden now my pedal isn't sending sostenuto and it should be. By pressing the buttons under key mapper layer, actually it's just the middle two buttons here, I can then enter a diagnostic page where maybe I want to look at MIDI. And now I can see, for example, that I am transmitting correctly. My pedal is sending, or maybe my keyboard is sending note on, note offs correctly. I can then exit out of this screen and still be in my editing dialog. That's all we have time to cover in our programming tutorial. There are many other parameters that you can explore. We recommend that you study some of your favorite preset programs to see many different examples of how to use VAST creatively. Once you start creating your own programs and samples, you're going to want to save them to disk. Let's take a moment and talk about memory. There are two kinds of RAM memory in the 2500, sample RAM and PRAM. Sample RAM is used only for actual sample data, whether it is samples you make yourself or load from disk. If you have the sampling version of the 2500, your unit comes with sample RAM. If you have the basic unit, you have no sample RAM. Either way, you can expand your unit up to 128 meg using SIMS. This type of memory is volatile. That is, when you turn the unit off, the samples will be lost, making it necessary to save them to disk before turning the unit off. The other type of RAM, PRAM, is used to hold all objects except for the actual samples. This type of RAM is battery backed. However, it is, is always a good idea to back up your data by saving it to disk anyway. Press the disk mode button. The current disk parameter is highlighted. If you have not changed this from the factory default, it will be set at floppy. You can use this parameter to select either the floppy drive or a SCSI drive. Each device in a SCSI chain needs to have its own separate ID. There are eight possible IDs numbered between 0 and 7. The default number for the 2500 is 6. If you're planning on hooking up your 2500 up to a SCSI drive, we recommend that you read the SCSI information at the beginning of the disk mode chapter in your manual. SCSI has several rules that need to be followed, or you can end up with corrupt data. For now, we'll be working with a floppy drive, so set the current drive to floppy. Take a double density or high density disk and put it in the drive. Make sure the write protect tab is in the down position. The K2000 uses a DOS format for its floppy disks. If you have a disk pre-formatted for, do for DOS, you can save it without formatting. Otherwise, you must format the disk. Press one of the more buttons till you see format and press it. Answer yes, and you'll be asked whether to format it for a 720K or a 1.4 meg. Double density disks are 720K, and high density disks are 1.4 meg. You should always format the disk for the appropriate size. If you try and format a double density disk for 1.4 meg, it will fail the formatting process. Press yes in the next couple of screens, and the formatting process begins. For those of you working with a SCSI drive, the process is basically the same. However, you will not be given the choice of size to format the drive. The 2500 will format it for the appropriate size. There are a couple of things to know about formatting SCSI. If you are using an optical drive, make sure to use a cartridge that is formatted for 512 bytes per sector instead of 1024 bytes per sector.
The second thing is that the 2500 does not format SCSI devices in fully implemented DOS, as it does with floppy disks. However, the 2500 can read and write to DOS formatted SCSI drives. So th those of you with a PC may want to format the drive from the PC. Then you can hook up the drive to either the PC or the 2500. If you format in DOS from the PC, make sure not to format with partitions because the 2500 can only see the first partition. For those of you with a Mac, if you have a program called Access PC, the Mac will recognize removable media drives more formatted on the 2500. Next, we'll talk about directories. You can group files on disk together within a directory, also known as a folder to Macintosh users. Grouping files by directory is extremely useful for organizing your sounds and songs, especially if you have a large hard drive. You can even put directories within other directories, just like on a computer. This is known as hierarchical file system. Press the Write More button and select New Directory. You are then asked to name the directory. The name can be up to eight characters and follows DOS naming standards. This screen looks similar to the naming screen for objects, but two of the soft buttons are different. The two arrow buttons are replaced. You can still move by the cursor by using the left and right arrow buttons to the right of the display. The arrow end button moves the cursor to the last character. The choose button will display a list of names of files already on the disk. This can be useful if you're naming a series of directories with similar names. You can pull the name off the disk without having to retype it and then modify it. Since this is your first directory, you won't see any names to choose from on your new disk. So hit cancel. We'll name our directory sounds. Next, the 2500 will ask you if you want to use the current directory for the file. Since this is our first directory, just press OK. The 2500 creates a directory and returns you to disk mode. Now we're ready to save a file. For all disk operations, there are two methods you can use. One is the bank method and the other is the object method. The object method will allow you to save and load individual objects. We'll start with the bank method since it's simpler. Press the write more button and select save. Notice that there are different banks of 100. If you scroll down, you'll also see everything, which saves everything in RAM. And master, which saves all the global and MIDI parameters. When you choose a bank to save, it will save all types of objects in that bank. An asterisk after the bank indicates that there are objects in that bank. Let's look at the soft buttons on this page. Pressing export gives you the opportunity to save a file in other formats besides the Kurzweil format. AIFF and WAVE are two different sample formats. MIDI stands for a Type 0 standard MIDI file, which is a standard format for sequences. Once you've selected your format, the K2000 will display any objects that would apply to that format. Since we have neither samples nor songs in memory at this point, the display shows nothing. Press cancel, then save again. The object soft button allows you to use the object method of saving. We'll talk about that in a moment. The new directory soft button performs the same feature found on the disk mode page. It is also placed here so you can create a new directory to save a file without having to exit the save page. We'll save the 200's bank, since that is where we save the program that we created. Once 200 through 299 is highlighted, press OK. Once again, we see the naming page. We'll name our file Music and press OK to save it. Mm -hmm. 
Next, the 2500 asks which directory we wish to save in and shows the current directory. In this case, it is the root directory, which is the top level of the disk hierarchy. This is indicated by the backslash with no other directory names. We want to save the file in our sounds directory, so press change. The top line of the display shows that we are in the root directory. The display shows all directories and files found within the current level. In this case, there is only one directory. The three soft buttons on the left side will help you navigate through the different directories. Since you can have directories placed within other directories, these buttons allow you to move up and down through the hierarchy. The root button takes you immediately to the top level. The parent button moves you back up one level, and the open button shows you the directories within the current directory. Pressing current will save the file to the current root level directory. If you want to save the file within the sounds directory, press the set directory button. The file is then saved. Now let's load a file into the K2500. For this example, we'll load a file from one of the disks that came with your 2500. This disk is marked Extra Programs and Demos. Put the disk in the drive and press Load. The 2500 looks at the disk and will display all the files and directories in the root level directory. You will want to take some time exploring the files on this disk. There is a directory full of demo sequence files. There is also a directory called the farm. In this directory, you will find over a thousand programs organized into follows by pr program type. It's an incredible collection of sounds, and it truly shows off the diverse capabilities of the 2500. Scroll down till you see the file marked video. This time, we'll use the object method to load individual objects. Press open. The 2500 reads the file and will display all the objects in the file. You can select individual objects to load. Simply scroll till that object is highlighted and press select. An asterisk will appear next to the name indicating that it, it has been selected. You can scroll through all the objects and select as many as you want this way. Once you, you have selected objects, you may want to double check the items you have selected. Pressing the next soft button will jump you to the next selected item in the list. If you have different types of objects in the file, pressing the type soft button will jump you to the first object for each type in the list. Another way to select objects is by using the multi-soft button. Pressing this button gives you a new screen which will allow you to select objects by various criteria. If the select parameter is set to type range, you can select various types of objects within a selected range of IDs. For example, you could choose to load only programs with IDs between, between 200 and 250. The All, Type, Toggle, and Clear soft buttons will help you in quickly selecting or deselecting groups of objects. There are also other settings for the select parameter. Check your manual for a detailed description of these features. Once you have chosen the objects you wish to be selected, press the Set Soft button. You will be returned to the Object Load page, and you will see that the objects you chose now have an asterisk indicating that they have been selected. Now press OK, and then Yes. You will then be asked which bank you want to load the objects into. Let's pick the 200s bank. Next, a group of soft buttons appears, which allows you to pick the method the 2500 will use to load the objects. If you started with an empty bank, you will see only append and fill. Since we started with a bank that already contained objects, we also will see overfill, overwrite, and merge. 
Each of these methods will load in the objects to different locations, depending on what is in the file and what is already in that bank. For a complete description of the differences between the various choices, consult your manual. For now, we'll choose append. The 2500 loads the objects and returns to disk mode. If you go to program mode and scroll through the bank, you will see the objects that you chose. Disk mode also gives other tools for manipulating files and directories. You can delete or rename them. You can move them from within one directory to another. You can also copy individual files or backup directories from one disk to another. These features work in much the same manner as loading and saving, so you can consult the manual if you have any questions on them. You will also find a soft button marked Utilities. In this window, you can check the amount of free space on your current disk, list the files in various directories, or find a file or directory by using a search string. The last thing we'll cover in disk mode is the macro feature. A macro is a set of instructions that will allow the K2500 to automatically load different files and individual objects from those files from a variety of disks. For example, if you have a CD-ROM full of samples, you could create your own programs using some of those samples and save the programs to a floppy disk. Then create a macro which will load the samples you want from the CD-ROM and the programs from the floppy. When you load the macro, the K2500 automatically will do the rest. Another thing you can do is create a boot macro, which will automatically load the files you want each time you turn the 2500 on. To create a macro, press the macro soft button. The 2500 has a macro table object in memory that will record all the files you load into the 2500. There is only one table in memory at a time. When you first enter the macro page, the macro recorder is turned off. Press the on soft button to turn the macro recording on. The 2500 returns to the disk mode page. Notice that the display shows that macro recording is on. Now you can go to the load page and load a file or group of files. The 2500 records everything you do. You can select individual objects from a file or load the entire file. We'll load the file video 2. After pressing OK, you will see the load dialog. But there are two new soft buttons. If you press OK, the 2500 will load in the selected file and add the entry to the macro table. If you don't want to actually load the file, but you want to add the entry to the macro table, press Macro. Normally, macro entries are added to the end of your current macro table. The Insert Soft button allows you to place the entry in a different spot. For now, we'll choose the 500 banks and press Macro. Then we will choose our loading method. We'll pick append. Now we'll add one more entry to our table. Load in file video 3 to the 600's bank. Now we're ready to save our macro. Press Save and then Macro. You'll see a list of all the entries in the macro table. Each entry shows where the file is being loaded from, in this case, the floppy. It also shows the directory path for the file and the bank it will be loaded to, along with the loading method, in this case, append. Before you save, you need to select which entries you want. You can highlight specific entries and press select to only select certain entries. Since we want both entries, we will just press all. 
Next, we'll name our macro test and save it. Now when we go back to load, we'll see a file called test mac. Notice that the file suffix is mac instead of the typical krz. Select that file. The display asks if you want to load the macro as specified. If you press OK, it will load the files into the banks we previously designated. You can also choose to override the bank and loading mode settings by choosing a different bank. We'll load as specified by pressing OK. The macro now goes through the loading process for the files. If you want to create a macro that will automatically load when you power on, you should save with your macro with the name boot. Then you set the startup parameter on the disk page to the SCSI ID that your boot Mac file will be found. You can also select the floppy drive. As soon as you turn on the 2500, it will search for that file on the designated ID. If it can't find it, it will inform you. You can go on from there. There are many more features of working with macros, and we suggest that you consult your manual for more on this area. Within the K2500 song mode, you'll find a full featured sequencer. For those of you who have never used a sequencer, it functions much like a tape recorder does. But instead of recording sound, it records events. When you play back the sequence, the 2500 recreates those events and the instrument is played just as if you were playing notes yourself in real time. Of course, since this information has been recorded digitally, you can go back and edit individual events to change your performance or fix mistakes. If you have the rack, you'll probably want to use the local keyboard channel parameter. As I mentioned before, this parameter will re-channelize incoming information. By setting the local keyboard channel to 1, I can leave my keyboard transmitting on channel 1. Then as I go to record on each track, I can change tracks without having to change the transmit channel on the keyboard. When you first go to song mode, you'll be on song number 1, New Song. If you're not on that song, change to it. Let's look at the main song page. Along the bottom, you'll see a row of 16 tracks, along with MIDI channels assigned to those tracks. We've logically assigned track 1 to MIDI channel 1, track 2 to channel 2, etc. However, you can assign any MIDI channel you want to any track. You can even have more than one track assigned to the same channel. But keep in mind that you can only have one program on a channel at a time. So in that case, both tracks would be playing the same program. To record our first track, we'll set the record track to 1 and call up a bass program. We'll set the tempo to 100. Then we'll go to the miscellaneous page and set the record mode to linear and the play mode to loop. There are different ways of recording your data, and we'll be exploring the various record modes. Linear recording is just like recording to tape. We can record as long as we want until the memory runs out. Check that the count off is set to 1, and the click is set to record. This will give us a one bar count off before recording starts, and we'll hear the click when recording, but not when playing back. Now press main to get back to the main page. In the upper right-hand corner, the 2500 displays the song's status, which is stopped right now. Press the record button. Notice the display flashes record ready. When you hit play, the 2500 will count off four beats since we designated a one-bar count off, and then begin recording.
When you're done, the 2500 asks if you want to save. You can name your song here as well. We'll go ahead and save it. Now I'm going to make some changes to the track I recorded. First, I'm going to quantize it. Quantization is a tool which allows you to move your notes forward and backwards in time so that they line up with a grid. With this technique, if you've played in something and the rhythm isn't very accurate, you can go back and make it accurate. Press Edit to go into the song Editor. There are sev several different types of editors. When you first enter the editor, you're on the Common page. This contains parameters such as tempo and time signature, which affects all tracks. Now press Track. This brings you into the Track Editor. In this editor, there are a variety of functions which can be applied to a specific track for a given range of measures. The upper right-hand corner shows you which track you're currently recording. You can change tracks with the channel bank buttons. With function highlighted, scroll to quantize. Notice the boxed area on the right. This is called the region criteria window. You will find this for all track editing functions. It is where you set the range of measure that you want to edit, along with other criteria such as selecting notes in a certain range, or only certain controllers. Since we have just entered the editor, it is set to edit from the beginning of the song till our current endpoint, and to edit the entire range of notes. We'll leave these parameters set at their defaults. On the left side of the page, you see the parameters specific to quantization. The quantization parameter lets you choose how much quantization applies. At 100%, the notes will be moved all the way to the grid point. If you choose an amount less than 100%, the notes will be moved only part way, according to the percentage. Grid lets you define the note value that you want to use. I'm going to quantize to 16th notes. Type in 16. You can quantize to any possible note value. To jump quickly through the standard values, highlight the parameter and press the plus and minus buttons simultaneously. The swing and shift parameters allow you to further change the way notes are moved. 0% swing is straight time. 100% produces a triplet feel. Shift lets you move the notes forward or backward by a specific amount. Once you have the parameters set the way you want, press go. The 2500 carries out the edit. Now we can play the song to hear the change. Press done to return to the common page. A lot of musicians and composers like to take loops from CD-ROM, especially for dance music, and uh, I can show you here on, with the K2500 sequencer how to adjust the relative tempo of the sequence with the loop so that it matches up properly. So here I've loaded in this loop, and I can go to song mode and place it into a sequence. You see that the tempo is at 120, which is probably not the proper tempo for the song, uh, or for the loop, but if I just get the loop into the song and stop, it doesn't matter how long I hold it, go into the event editor of the song and see that my starting, my starting note is at 120. Um, I, I'm just going to bring that into the very first tick by pressing 001 and then enter. And now I've got my, the start of my loop at the very beginning of the song and I can stretch it out for the full length of one bar, which is going to be one bar loop. I can save this song. Now, it's at tempo 120, which is not the proper tempo for this loop. As you'll hear, after one beat, it's not looping properly. So I can adjust with fractional tempos. Um, I go into the event editor, and I see that there is no tempo indication here. To get a tempo marker into your song, you just press record and play. And then during the count off, just change the, uh, the tempo field one increment and then press stop. Save that, and now if I look in the event editor, I see that I have a tempo display. <laughs> 